Hey, thanks for watching. So, um, Donald Miller here. My guys are out. I got my jobs running. And, you know, I wanted to make a video, uh, another video about helpers, okay? Especially if you're a helper and you're getting up in the ages. Um, you can't ride the coattail of your mechanic and think he's going to make you a mechanic. All right. Some of these helpers, they don't understand what they need to do to, to, to further their career. They, they, you can't be a helper and think it's just a job. It's, it's, it, it'll, it'll last for, you know, you get in with a certain company, they'll, they'll never educate you and you'll be a helper the rest of your life. All right, you might get that dollar a raise per year and over a 20 year time, you'll make more than $20 more an hour than you're making now. But, you know, that's, that's a long ways, to, that's a long time to wait for 20 bucks an hour. Um, you know, there, there's other avenues to go where you can really make some, some money and, and further your knowledge and your education. So. All right, I'm gonna, I'll give an example here. So I was on a job and the mechanic's in the attic and the helper is on the primary floor. And it should be the exact opposite, okay? It, if your helper is competent, like anything over entry level can go into an attic correctly and do attic work. Um, your mechanic should never be in an attic. Your mechanic is kind of the, the orchestra, okay? He's the conductor. He kind of, he points people in the directions of where to go, and then he instructs them what to do when they're there. If, if you have your mechanic in the attic, now nothing's getting done except for what he's doing. So his help, I, I walk onto a job, and the helper has his hands in his pockets, and he's just standing there. And one, never put your hands in your pocket, okay? Bottom line, you know, grab a broom, grab, you know, be find something to occupy your time while your mechanic is working if you do have free time, okay? If you're just standing there, you know, twiddling your thumbs, um, it never looks good regardless if, if uh, uh, a senior is, is looking at you or not. But what, what the helper should be doing is when that mechanic goes to set foot in that attic, if that helper has confidence, that helper should be like, get the old man off the ladder. And the helper should get up there, man up, and start becoming an adult. Get up there and work for your dollar. Show that mechanic what you're made of, okay? Because really, that, that's what makes you, you becoming a mechanic is is you taking that foot forward when the mechanic's not asking you to and you don't have to but if you take that foot forward okay that's where the your progression into the mechanic field begins is by you manning up and like I was when I was an apprentice I would have they would have kept me an apprentice except for the fact that I was like a rabid dog on my mechanic. I mean, I was like, he could tell I was hungry and I was gonna start biting at his ankles if he wouldn't give me things to do. So they started throwing hard work at me and I, 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 I loved it. I, I, anything they threw at me, but see if you can tackle this, see if you can tackle that. And I jumped on it. And the more you jump on it, 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 it grows inside of you. It's like a, a hunger that, you know, it wants to be fed, all right? And that's, like, if you're a helper, you should have that hunger for this trade. It's, it's an amazing trade. It's going to push your limits. Like, going into 120, 130-degree attics because the exhaust fan doesn't work, yeah, like, grab on that. Go grab a bottle of water. Chug the bottle of water and get up there. You know, we were doing attic work back in 05, 06 for the month of July. And we were in attics for eight hours a day. 
well, six. We, we worked six and we got paid for eight. But we would drink literally like bottles of water and the, the sweat, it wasn't dripping. It became a solid line as the attic got really hot. And that's how we knew it was getting dangerous was how much sweat was. If we stop sweating, by all means, it's really dangerous. Get out of that attic because you're in, you're in trouble. But nine times out of ten, you would be drinking gallons of water. And you're pushing the limits of your education and your knowledge. And it, it, it's a learning experience. That That's what you want as a helper. You need to be hungry, okay? And if I have three helpers on a job and there's three mechanics... All right, the hungriest helper gets fed. And you, helpers out there, you need to know this, okay? The, the hungriest helper is the one that's gonna make the most money. All right, he's the one that's gonna be fed. And you can't fake hunger, okay? Because, you know, you might be able to fake it in front of people, but when the job's flowing is when it's really evident if you're truly hungry, if you've really got it. when. When it's hot and your mechanic is busy and everyone is busy on the job, all eyes will be on you. Okay, we're gonna work when 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 the when the job gets moving. Okay, and you're no longer paying attention to looking good. Okay, looking good. Okay, no longer are people looking. That's when someone is looking, and we're gonna find out if you're hungry or not. Because there's guys that talk this great game how hungry they are and they have all these stories to tell you okay but when it comes down to brass tacks and it comes down like you let the stories go nod to, like i love listening to stories my gosh um but give it like a couple weeks and let's see if that story comes to fruition and let's see if let's see what you're really made of all right because you know everyone talks a great game no one says they're a piece of crap like hey i never heard anyone say i'm a low life Okay, everyone's got a good story, okay? It's it's what happens when you're not telling that story is what you're gonna be judged on. And if you're a helper and you're trying to make it in this trade, be hungry, be thirsty. And a mechanic isn't gonna give you an opportunity to do something, okay? Like when, when my mechanics have helpers, my mechanics only give them stuff that they know 100% they're capable of. Okay, so if you're waiting for your mechanic to give you the responsibility of doing something difficult, you're, you're going to be waiting a long time. You need to step up and tell your mechanic you can handle it. And then he's going to test you on it. And then you're going to learn. But you got to man up. And, and, I, and I don't like a woman can man up too. like I, I have no problem with women in this trade if you want to be in this trade. Okay, but manning up means step into the plate, tell your mechanic, I can handle this responsibility. I can handle this, okay? That will let your mechanic, your mechanic will say, okay, let's see if you can do it. And it'll free him up to do something else, like something else on the site. That's important. So what happened this, this job yesterday, I walked on site and I watched this guy and I immediately told him, get your hands out of your pocket, put your tool bag on and you're going in the attic. And he's like, what? I'm like, oh, yeah, dude. Oh, get up in that attic. And he did all three fan bars easily. Like, he knew what he was doing, but he just needed someone to put some fire underneath his ass. And that's really, like, not every helper is going to have someone like me to kind of light that fire, okay? And I only get you, I can only start the engine, okay? You got to pick that up and roll with it, okay? And you got to have that motivation and that drive. Because if not... It'll take you 20 years to become a mechanic in this trade if you don't have the drive to do so. Okay, you can't sit back and wait for it to happen because it's never going to happen. You need to step up and take control. Okay, go up to your mechanic. Okay, now don't be stupid. If you're an entry-level guy, don't ask to do a, a panel. Okay, but if you're an entry-level guy, okay, ha start organizing wire. And he'll be like, well, do you know the different sizes? And then you can tell him the different sizes. And then he'll start teaching you on organizing the truck. And then he'll teach you the difference between an MC connector and a Romex connector. Or a button connector. Okay? Or, you know, threaded nipples. All right? He, you got you to gotta be hungry and you got to step up. All right? And the ones that do, 
I, I try, like, I know we all go through slow periods in electrical trade, but the guys that are really hungry, I try to keep busy. Like, even if I send them into the office to do inventory or the shop to do inventory or it's whatever it may be, I'm constantly trying to keep that hunger fed because you want you want to keep them moving, keep them moving, keep them moving because they're the ones that are going to become the mechanics the quickest. All right. Thanks for watching. And if you're a helper, you know, this trade's awesome. Okay. This trade can beat you up if you let it. But if you if you if you get hungry and you jump on it, put the fucking booze. I didn't mean to curse. Put the drugs down, okay? Like if you put the drugs down and you pay attention on site, don't just stand there and watch people, but truly pay attention. Guys will respect you more. All right, thanks for watching. Donald Miller's Electrical Services. Take care.